Okay, so I would like to welcome you to this Hands-On Equations introductory webinar. Uh, it, I'm going to mute the uh, background. Okay, so if we should have, this is Dr. Henry Bornson doing the webinar. If there are any technical issues, please stay tuned. Usually they're resolved very quickly. At the end of the webinar, we'll be raffling an individual set of hands-on equations. Okay, and I think we owe Kimberly a set from the prior work webinar. We know from experience that the current school approach to algebra is too abstract and an unmitigated disaster for most students. So that was a report in 1998. And today, some 20 years later, the concepts are still presented at the abstract level. So the workshop, Making Algebra Child's Play, was designed to deal with that issue. And the goal is to demystify the learning of algebra so that instead of students thinking or feeling they're knocking their head against the wall, the light goes on and everything they do makes sense to them. The program can be used as early as the third grade through the middle school. It's also, it's also been used, has been used at the high school level with uh, students having trouble with algebra. There are three main objectives to the program. The first one is to enhance student self-esteem. So when students, especially if they have not experienced success in school or in mathematics, and then they succeed with algebra, it changes their self-perception. The second objective is to promote greater student interest in mathematics when they succeed in what they're doing and they understand what they're doing, they want to do more of it. And the third objective is to provide students with a solid foundation for later algebraic work. Very often we try to teach algebra at the abstract level and the students cannot relate to those concepts that way. So there are certain materials that the students use it, one is a flat laminated balance, and then they use these pawns and cubes, the blue pawns and red cubes for level one. And the teacher uses a three-dimensional scale. It has no moving parts. It's just used to represent the equations. And the goal of hands-on equations is to find the value of the blue pawn. So in lesson number one, the goal, notice in lesson number one, we don't have an equation written in um, 3x plus, we don't have an equation written in formal notation. We have a pictorial notation. And the goal is to find the value of the pawn that makes both sides equal. For example, and we call the pawn x. For example, if the pawn has a value of 3, the left side would be 3, 6, 8. And the right side would be 8 and 3 is 11. Okay, something's happening here, hopefully. I don't know what that is. 8 and 3, 11. Since 8 is not equal to 11, 3 is not the answer. So the students try different values until they find the value that makes both sides equal. Do you know what the uh, response is, Kimberly? Can you text chat it? What's the value of the pawn that will make both sides equal? It's going to be x equals what? x equal. The value of the pawn that will make both sides equal will be x is equal to 6. Let's try 6. If x is 6, on this side, we have 6, and 6 is 12, and 2 is 14. 8 and 6 is 14. So when x is equal to 6, both sides have a value of 14. Okay, uh, Kimberly, do you agree with that? When x is 6, both sides have a value of 14. Okay, so in lesson number one, the students learn that the pieces placed on the balance scale are additive. In other words, these pawns, we add their values to get the value of each side. The value of the pawn is fixed in any given problem. The pawn must have the same value each time. Both sides of the scale must be equal, and the name or value of the pawn is x. So a lot is learned just in lesson number one. In lesson number two, the students need to set up the equation on the balance scale and then use guess and check. So let's 
do that here. The equation is 3x plus 1 equals x plus 7. So um, how shall I represent 3x? Please text out your response. How shall I represent 3x plus 1? Okay, so let me set it up here on the scale. We want 3x plus 1 equal to x plus 7. Okay, so 3x are going to be three blue pawns. We have 1x, 2x, 3x, plus 1 is going to be equal to x plus 7. So that would be the setup for the problem. And at this point, we use trial and error to get the answer. If you have the answer for the value of x, would you please text chat your response? What is the value of the pawn that will make both sides equal? We're using trial and error or guess and check. Okay, so it looks like the answer is going to be x equals to 3 because 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10, 3 and 7 is 10. So the answer here will be x is equal to 3. Now, in lesson 3, we are ready to take a gigantic step forward. And we claim that all of your students in grades 3 to 9 can learn to solve this type of equation in just three lessons. So let's see how we set it up on our interactive whiteboard here. This equation may be different than the one that was there. Okay, 4x plus 2 equals 3x plus 9. So uh, can I get your help, please? How do I set up 3x plus 9 on the right side? Okay, can I have a suggestion? How do we set up this is 4x plus 2. I need to set up 3x plus 9. Okay, so I'm going to set up three blue pawns. 1, 2. Okay. Now, if you try to do this by trial and error, and we actually ask the students to do so, they, they find that there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of arithmetic to try to do by trial and error. So therefore, in lesson three, we introduced the idea of a legal rule. That is, if we remove a blue pawn from each side, we will maintain the balance of the equation. And we use both hands when we do that legal rule. We can do it again. And we can do it a third time. So now we have removed three x's from both sides of the equation. Now we have a much simpler, simpler equation. A pawn and a two work nice. So we see from here that x has the value of seven. And in order to do the check, we reset the original problem one more time. And if each x is seven, we evaluate each side. We have 7, 14, 21, 28, 30. And on the right side, we have 7, 14, 21, and 9 is 30. Okay, so that shows that x equals 7 is the solution to this equation. So on the teacher's balance scale, this is what the students in the class see. They see the, the cube facing them. This is the setup. On the student scale, the pawns, the cubes are facing upward so that you, the teacher walking around the room, can quickly see what is the correct setup. So if I remove the same weight from each side of a balanced scale, I'm maintaining the balance. Notice we use both hands at the same time. That's the legal move they learned in lesson three. And here's the teacher illustrating that legal move. Let's see what the legal move looks like on the student setup. So here we have 4x plus 2 equals 3x plus 9. So this student 
And doing the legal move of removing three pawns from each side has brought down the three pawns. And we think the answer is seven. So now in order to, so we clear the scale and in order to do the check, we set up the original problem one more time. And then we evaluate both sides, okay? So to sum up, in hands-on equations, we use pawns and cubes. We solve for the unknown, we clear the scale, and we reset the scale to conduct the check. So there's research that shows that hand gestures can dramatically improve the learning of mathematics. Now, when we did this legal move of taking away three blue points from each side, we were employing the subtraction property of equality. In high school, we teach this, we very often teachers will say to the students, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. But notice that that language is not helpful because this two, which is a constant, is not the same as this two, which is a coefficient. So we just can't simply remove the same thing from each side of what looks the same. Okay, so now let's look at lesson five. 5x five minus 3x plus 2 is equal to x plus 5. So let's see how we're going to do that. Um, okay, let's do it over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place five. Imagine these are blue pawns. So what do you suggest we do next? Can I have a suggestion here? What shall we do next? Comment, please. The problem says 5x take away 3x plus 2 equals x plus 5. Okay, so at this point in the program, white pawns have not been introduced. And the problem does not say 5x plus the opposite of 3x. This is simply an operation, the operation of subtraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away three blue pawns. Okay, so that's 5x take away 3x plus 2 equal x plus 5. Now from here, we can solve the problem by taking away a point from each side. But what I would like to point out is that when you present this problem to students, some students will, will directly set up two pawns and a two is equal to x plus five. In other words, some students won't have the need to place five blue pawns and then subtract three. Rather, they'll do that mentally. So without specific instruction, they're learning to combine like terms. Okay, so now let's look at lesson number six. Okay, it says Yiska here, but I think we're going to show Yosef. Uh, okay, now to set up the problem twice, two, two parentheses, x plus three, what we're going to do is we're going to cover this two on the outside. We're going to set up what's inside the parentheses. And then we're going to double whatever we have. OK, so let's see a video here of how young man does this. OK, so Yosef here is, I think, five or six years old. All right, you won't be able to hear him, but I'll be able to tell you what he says. Oh, it's Moshe, not Yosef, sorry. Let's begin by setting up 2x plus 1. What does this 2 outside the parentheses tell us to do? He says to do it again. All of that is equal to x plus 5. Now we're ready to do our legal moves. Do you see a legal move? It removes a point from each side. Do you see another legal move? He says no. 
This is a five cube, one value, one value. How much are each of the pawns? One. Please take the pen and write down x equals to one. Would you reset the original equation to do the check? Let's see, both sides have the same value. If x is one, how much is this side? He says six. So please write down six equals to six. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, after a while, some of the students, instead of setting up an X, instead of setting up X and three, give one second here, and then another X and three, and on the other side, setting up X and eight, some students will set up the problem in this form. X and six equals X and eight. In other words, some students will realize that this says two sets of X and three, so they'll set it up in the form like this. So without being told the distributive property, they will begin to set that up on their own. So hands-on equations is an algebraic learning environment and students pick up many concepts on their own. So we go from concrete to pictorial to abstract. So the pictorial notation begins with an image of the balance scale. Here we just have a horizontal vertical line. The X's are represented by shaded triangles. The, the constant by a number cube. Notice we don't have any plus signs on our balance scale. And then the legal move is indicated by using arrows. We're taking three X from each side. Now this uh, legal move I haven't talked about yet. So we can also do legal move with the cubes. I can take away three value from this side, the nine becomes a six. And so therefore X is equal. So that's the pictorial notation. The manuals that come for the, from, for the program take the users step by step. And this is what a worksheet looks like. We have four examples on the new lesson and six problems that review prior work. And Dr. Larry Barber and myself did some research going back now almost 10 years. And we discovered that students in grades four, six, or eight attain about the same level after the first seven lessons. They begin at a different level, as you would expect, but at the end of the program, all of the students score about 90%. Okay, in this other study in Broward County, initially only 8% of the students could solve an equation with unknowns on both sides. After seven lessons, that number went up to 79%. So Larry Barber says that in conducting educational research for more than 50 years, I have never seen the kind of pre-test to post-test gains I have found with hands-on equations. Maria Montessori spoke about the spontaneous leap from the concrete to the abstract. So this is a class of uh, students using the program. We encourage the students to come up to demonstrate for their fellow students. This is an older class of students. Okay, let's now solve this mentally. Okay, so please let's use the text chat panel. Let's imagine the X's are bowling pins. How many bowling pins can I take away from both sides of the equation? And please text chat your response. How many bowling pins can I take away? Good, 38. If I do that, how many am I left with on the left side? How many bowling pins am I left with on the left side? Two. Now, if you take away a constant of 12 from both sides, you have a six. 
So since two bowling pins have a value of six, how much is each x? So notice we solved this equation mentally in about 10 seconds using the hands-on equations approach. We just did it mentally. Okay, so let's get some feedback. Um, let me see if I can, um, let's get some feedback. What are your thoughts about what we've done so far? Do you think hands-on equations can be helpful with the type of students that you work with? I like the visual component, okay. So the program has been used with average students, below average students, at risk students. You can do math hands on and on paper and pencil. Okay, let's move on. We're going to do a brief introduction to level two. In level two, we introduced a white pawn, and the white pawn has the name of star. Star is white, like the stars in the sky. It makes them think critically about algebraic manipulation. Okay, thank you. So X and star are opposites of one another. If X is two, star is negative two. If X is negative five, star is opposite five. Since X and star are opposites, why do you think they're worth together? How much is X plus star since they're opposites of each other? So the answer is they're gonna be worth zero. It's like if you find $5 and lose $5, you're back where you started. So now we need to look at a new legal move. We have three X, three X plus star equals X plus four. Okay, so let me set it up here on our scale, lesson 10. Level two. Uh, lesson 10. Okay, so you have one X, two X, three X plus star. is equal to x plus four. Okay, do we have a suggestion for how we can simplify this equation? A suggestion for how to simplify this equation. What can we do? The various approaches we can use. Okay, since a blue and a white pawn together are word zero, let's remove this pair of opposites, okay? Let's remove that. And now we can remove a pawn from each side. That's a legal move. And so we see that X has a value of four and therefore star is gonna have a value of negative four. And let's do the check to see if it works out. So if X is four, I have I have four, eight, 12, and now I'm back to eight. This is a negative four. If X is four, four and four is eight. Okay, so the check to this equation is gonna be eight. It's gonna be eight is equal to eight. Eight equals eight, okay. Um, when we do the legal move of removing a blue or white pawn from one side, we use one hand in order to do that. Okay, let's now look at lesson 11. This solution requires creativity. So let's look at that. Lesson 11. Okay, so here you have two X is equal to star plus six. So the first question we ask is, is this a legal move? Would this be legal? What do you think? 
It would not be legal because they're not worth the same amount. So we can't do that. So we need a new legal move in order to remove this white pawn. Can I have a suggestion? What's a new legal move that we can use to remove the white pawn? Add a blue pawn to the right side, okay. All right, well, if we add a blue pawn to the right side, in order to maintain the balance, we need to add a blue pawn to the left side. So what we're gonna do is use the addition property of equality. We add a blue pawn to both sides of the equation. And now you can remove a pair of opposites. So if three X's are six, we see that X is equal to two. And star being the opposite would be worth a negative two. And now let's do the check to see if it works out. If X is two, two and two is four. Now in this case, let's begin with six. Six lose two is four. So the check would be four equals four. So one approach to this type of problem is to use the addition property of equality and add a blue pawn to each side. There's another approach we can use to eliminate the white pawn. Do you know what that is? Another approach that we can use to remove the white pawn. Okay, well, let's remember that a blue and a white pawn together are worth zero. So if I add a zero value to either side of the scale, I won't be affecting the balance. So do you want me to add it here or here? Shall I add it to the right side of the scale or to the left side of the scale? Left side of the scale, because now I can remove a white point from each side, okay? So these are two strategies that students learn for solving equations such as this one. Okay, so now let's have a brief introduction to verbal problems. This problem says that five times K's age increased by two is the same as twice her age increased by 11. So the first question is, how do we represent five times K's age? Let's say K's age is a pawn. Do I want a five cube with a pawn or do I want five pawns? Now, See your text chat response five times K's age. What would you do there? A five with a pawn or five pawns for five times K's age? Your thoughts, please? Okay, so I think it's gonna be five blue pawns. That's, that's K's age five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now it says increased by two, that means it's two more. And that's gonna be the same as twice K's age increased by 11. So that's gonna be the setup of the problem. So all of these words that you see here are now represented visually here. So now let's solve it. I can take away two blue points from this side and I can take away two blue points from the right side. I can take away two value from the left side and therefore the 11 becomes a nine. So at this point, we know that each pawn has a value of three. But we still have not answered the question. Have not answered the question. Uh, why have we not answered the question? Oops, what's going on here? Sorry about that. Um, I don't know, one second. We haven't answered the question yet because the question is how old is K? So we need to answer the question, K is how old is K? So since the pawn represented K's age and the pawn is three, K is three years old. Okay, let's do the check to see if it works out. Five times K's age, that would be 15. Increased by two, that would be 17. Is the same as twice her age, that would be six increased by 11. Six increased by 11 is also 17. 
So the check does work out. Okay, so that gives you an example of how we work with verbal problems. Okay, uh, can I, can you let me know if you've been able to follow what we did here, this solution, does it make sense? Okay, so now, now we're gonna do a more advanced verbal problem. This is a verbal problem about consecutive numbers, which students may not see before the seventh, eighth, or ninth grade. So before we can do a problem with consecutive numbers, we need to know how to represent consecutive numbers. Now consecutive numbers are numbers like uh, 10, 11, 12, 20, 21, 22. So they are numbers that differ by one. So therefore, if the first number is a pawn, the second number would be a pawn and a one, and the next one would be a pawn and a two, because these three numbers differ by one. Okay, pawn, pawn, and one, pawn, two. So now we're ready to set up the equation. It says the last of three consecutive numbers, well, the last one is a pawn and a two. So let's begin with that. So we begin with a pawn and a two, the last of three consecutive numbers increased by 10, increased means we have to add 10, is equal to the sum of the first two consecutive numbers. Well, the first number is a pawn, and the second one is a pawn and a one. So unless I made a mistake, this is the setup for the problem. So let's verify it, please. The last of three consecutive numbers, one and two, increased by 10 is equal to the sum of the first two consecutive numbers. So this looks okay. So now let's do a legal move. Let's remove one pawn from each side. So now we have 12 here, one here, and a pawn here. If you want, you could remove a one from this side also. You don't need to, but you could do that. And so you see that the pawn is equal to 11. Pawn is equal to, pawn is equal, okay, it's jumping up there. Pawn is 11. So the pawn is equal to 11, but still we haven't answered the question. We need to answer the problem. So if the pawn is 11, what are the three consecutive numbers? May I have the response, please? The three consecutive numbers are 11, 12, and 13, okay? Three consecutive numbers, 11, 12, and 13. And let's see if this checks out. The last of three, so let's do the check. The last of three consecutive numbers, 13 increased by 10, that's gonna be 23. That's supposed to be equal to the sum of the first two consecutive numbers. 11 plus 12 is 23, so it does work out. Okay, so as you can see, you could do some pretty advanced problems with the hands-on equations materials. So has this short webinar enabled you to see the value of hands-on equations? You could comment with respect to word problems. What are your thoughts? Do you see how it simplifies word problems? It makes them more concrete. You can visualize them. Okay, so available materials are hands equations home packet, class set of hands-on equations, the Verbal Problems Introductory Workbook, Verbal Problems Book. And we also have apps for iOS, Android, and Kindle. Uh, in a, uh, next week, I believe we're doing an introductory workshop on hands-on equations fractions. You're welcome to join us for that. This is a class set of materials. And we have staff development on all the various programs that we have, Making Algebra Child's Play, Demystifying Verbal Problems, developing fraction sense. Okay, so we are ready for the raffle, and I know who the winner is. Okay, so.
So would you all enter a number from one to 10? The winner is Kimberly. Okay, Kimberly is the winner. Okay. Okay, very good. All right, so I appreciate your um, joining us for this webinar. Okay, somebody's coming to join us, but we're really finished now. I don't know, maybe she's on a different time zone. It's unfortunate, but we're not finished. Okay, so, uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, very good. So I'm going to uh, uh, stay tuned. Okay, don't go away, and we'll have a chance to uh, chat. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, Natalie, we just finished the web webinar. Send you a link. A recording. Okay, Natalie, can you hear me? Okay, no, she can't hear me. Yes, she can. Um, okay, Natalie, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, Natalie, I hate to tell you this. We just finished the webinar. You must be on a different oh. time zone. Oh, okay. Uh, we awesome. do have, I do have a link to a recording. We could send that to you. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. I'm sorry. How did that, uh, were you registered? Yeah, you were registered. How did that mistake occur? Do you know? We just, we, it wasn't I clear don't, that. Yeah. I see you're, you're, you're a different time zone. Okay, my apologies to you. That's fine. We'll send you, we'll send you the link, okay? Okay, that's perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Um, okay. So, Kimberly, stay tuned. I'm going to log out and then log back in. Okay. Okay.